Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and this is going to be a seasonal fall Halloween-ish video and I have some books that I have read that are 100% seasonal friendly and then I have some that I'm guessing are seasonal friendly so you can either tell me if I'm right or if I'm wrong. Also, oh shoot, I have special glasses to wear. They are non-prescription. <laughs> Those were prescription. But these came with this like a little outfit of my little suspenders, my little bow tie. That's fine. Okay. So I'm going to get right into it because I'm known for talking way too much. Also, there's going to be timestamps down below. If you are looking for a certain recommendation book, just be aware that I think six out of the 10 that I'm recommending are ones that I've read. The other four I have not. So forewarned. The first book that I'm recommending for this fall Halloween spooky season is going to be The Beautiful by Renee Adia just because I just finished this a day or two ago so I know it's seasonal friendly and it is pretty atmospheric in the way that a spooky-ish read. This book was not everything I wanted it to be but it is good for this seasonal video. And this follows Celine and she is forced to move from Paris to New Orleans where she is taken in by a convent. During this time she meets some people that are not quite human. You could even say that they're inhuman and she is basically thrust into this underworld. There are murders, there's a mystery, there is inhumans with powers and she doesn't know who to trust, who to go to, and even if she can trust herself. So here's book one. The next book is The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. I feel like this is a really seasonal read just because it is about a girl who's about to be a chieftain of her, I think they're called clans, if I remember correctly. There is bone magic and these clans get their powers from teeth. So certain teeth give them certain powers. During this time she runs into a prince and his, I want to say, bodyguard, maybe servant, can't remember and they are running from a very ruthless queen. She is put together with these two and they are trying to traverse some very touchy subjects while on a very dodgy adventure. So there's old secrets that are going to come to light. Alliances are going to be tested and there might even be a forbidden romance within this novel. It has been some time since I read this book but I remember absolutely loving it even knowing the complex world building and magic system do take a little bit to get used to. I did really enjoy this book. My next book is Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I adored this book so much and and what makes this a very spooky or Halloween fall book for this video is the fact that the main magic system within this book is blood magic and what's spookier than using one's own blood to perform magic. There are some trigger warnings within this book for self-harm and cutting. Though the cutting is the foundation of a magic system, it is spoke about very briefly that one of these magic users did self-harm in the past and it wasn't to use magic. But in this book, you have Nadia who has what she would want to call pure magic and she can commune with the gods and in return, the gods give her power. But she was raised to believe that blood magic users were evil, they're monsters, they're just horrible, horrible human beings. And so when she comes across one, she is forced to rethink everything that she's been taught and the struggle within herself for basically the conflicting emotions of how these people aren't so different than her. They have similar goals, they have similar aspirations, and maybe they're not the monsters that she was taught to believe. My next book is A Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. And and this first book especially is circled around power again from teeth. So we have a chimera, he took in a girl and she now retrieves teeth from human beings so he can put them together basically and it's again part of the magic system. This book is full of dirty teeth for one, but it's also full of who do you trust? Are alliances what you believed? Do you wear, work with your people or against your people when things get tough? And what do you do when you have nothing else left to lose? This book was one of my favorite books when I first read it. I think I read it in 2019. Yes, I read it in 2019 and it was my one of my favorite books of 2019 and it is absolutely perfect for the spooky season. 
The next book is The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. This is one of the most atmospheric books I have ever read. So it's not necessarily up my wheelhouse, but it is absolutely perfect for this season. We have a girl, Violet, who is dragged back to, I think it's her mother's hometown, where things aren't necessarily as they seem. This book is full of other dimensions, other worlds, monsters, and the people within this town who are born to protect one world from the other. This other dimension that they call the gray is getting stronger and stronger every single day. People keep dying and it's up to these characters to pretty much save the day. Like I said, it is such an atmospheric read. It really gives you the fall, Halloween, Midwestern, small town feel. And I think it was absolutely perfect for this video. The next book is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. This I think is a pretty well-known book. I think a lot of these books are pretty well known. I'm finally getting around to the well-known books. I'm known to not read books that people know about. I get like the free ones off like Kindle and stuff but I finally started reading the books that I own that are pretty popular. I've only read book one of this series but it is perfect. We have all these children who are taken into this orphanage. They've all been abandoned and they all have super special gifts. There's mystery involved. And basically it follows this boy who is basically finding out about Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, finding out that on this very remote island that this orphanage even existed or exists and what it means to be part of this orphanage. Were they just kids with special abilities or were they dangerous human beings or were they both? The next four books I have not read so I am pretty much guessing but I will start off with the book that I know probably the best because even though I haven't read the book I have watched the movie and I have watched the first season of the Netflix original series but it is the series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket and this book is about three siblings and after tragic strikes they are left with no parents and I think it's their uncle is supposed to take them in but things again are not nearly as they seem they're not sure who killed their parents but they do definitely know that it was a staged murder their parents were murdered and it was not indeed an accident each of the siblings seems to have a special knack or a special ability whether it's being extremely smart whether it's being super charming and so they are basically shuffled around after their parents death from person to person while trying to figure out what happened and where do they go from here. The next book I've been told to read time and time again, though it does have pretty mixed reviews online, and that is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I hope I said that right. And as far as I know, this is just about a girl who loves Jack the Ripper. And maybe she is some sort of murder murderess because she's holding a pointy dagger and it is stalking Jack the Ripper. So I'm assuming she's maybe a murderer who stalks a murderer and calls it love. That is my best guess. But either way, Jack the Ripper is a murderer, perfect for the Halloween season. Stalking, perfect for the Halloween season. Pointy objects, perfect for the holiday season. That is my best description of this book. So enjoy. My next book is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I know this follows a girl who enters Yale and becomes part of a secret society or multiple secret societies. She joins one or more secret societies. I'm not exactly sure how the secret societies fit into the plot of this book. Bear with me. But apparently there's murders and sinister plots going on and even some dabbling with magic. I know before she comes to Yale she fell in really hard with her ex-boyfriend, drug dealers, and was even part of a homicide. So there's just a lot going on in this book. I have heard that there are so many trigger warnings for this book. So if you do decide to pick up this homicide, secret society, magic, spooky sounding book, please know that one, it's an adult fantasy, if I'm not mistaken, but it is adult and there are a lot of trigger warnings. I feel like this book is also very, very seasonal worthy for this video. And my last book is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. I know this follows, I think, a girl and her brother and to stay alive and basically fight to live another day, they are grave diggers. But the one bad thing about being grave diggers, as the synopsis says, is sometimes the dead don't always stay dead 
dead. Um, that sounds very Halloween fall to me, very October worthy. The risen corpses are known as bone houses. The legend says that they are the result of an old curse. So there is grave digging, there is people coming back to life, there's a curse. It sounds very magical and spooky to me. And so here's the last book for this recommendation video. I hope you enjoyed. I don't do a lot of recommendation videos anymore, but if you want to see more of this, please let me know. Let me know if you want a theme. The last one I did do was my YA fantasy Asian inspired recommendation video. I butchered that title. I will put it up above and down below if you want to check it out. And anyways, please stay spooky during this spooky season and I'll see you spooks all later. All love. Bye.